And Graven, thank you for being an offensive advocate for the Ravens fan base. It's so funny how Ravens fans are conditioned to think about roster construction. I won't lie to you or Ravens flock, but I follow Lamar here from Louisville. And after a year of watching Harbaugh and other players, I fell in love with the team as a whole. Having, having an outsider's perspective helps me when assessing what the Ravens need to do to take the next step. Uh, this question is from my guy, Jared, by the way. Uh, he said, we are in an offensive league, and in order for the Ravens to be true contenders, we need another weapon. This is not your father's NFL. The league has changed. But oops, we're in luck because we have the most game-breaking, mold-cutting, new-age player in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. Building a decent wall and adding weapons around him should be the Ravens' number one priority. Although... I'm not sure how soon this will happen. I do think Ravens fans should go into this year realistically. With Greg Roman still at offensive coordinator, I just don't think he's the guy to take this offense to the next level. However, once again, that guy is already on our team. I challenge anyone to go watch USC versus Penn State in the 2018 Rose Bowl when T. Martin was the offensive coordinator for USC. He is such a creative play caller with way more advanced passing schemes and route concepts. My dream Ravens scenario, of course, would be for them to win the Super Bowl this year. But if we're being realistic with the team as currently constructed with a new defensive coordinator and Greg Roman at offensive coordinator, I just don't see it happening. Tell me what you think of the above. And just like Greg Roman's playbook, I'm out of ideas. Oh, um, that was, that was fun. That's a, this is a fun way to start off questions from subscribers. He bringing it already. Um, Right now, and it's still not necessarily that it's early, but it's still it's still early. Me, I, and I've said this already. I don't think the Ravens are a Super Bowl team right now. I think they certainly could be with a couple more things here and there. Uh, specifically, uh, interior pass rush because they if they still just gonna be their, their specialty is still gonna be with their edge guys only and and nothing from the interior then that's going to be a problem. Quarterbacks could just step up in the pocket. They can make them edge guys miss like we have seen over the past couple of years. Um, but if they can get interior pressure, that will help them go a long way. Um, just to stick on the defense, and then, well, of course, you know we're going to go to offense because, you know, we're an advocate for the offense. Uh, but to stick with defense, um, probably that depth in the secondary. And, again, all these things can be addressed in the draft. And they can still be addressed, whether it be trade or the rest of free agency and whatnot. Um, so just because I feel like they're not a Super Bowl contender right here, right now. Again, we, we do have the draft coming up because last time I said this, well, there were people flipping out like, oh, man, ain't great. what are you talking about? You, what, what are you saying? You doing not a Super Bowl contender? Are you crazy, man? And I'm like, relax. The, the, the draft is still on the way. Free agency is not done. I mean, free agency is never done. Uh, free agency lasts all year. But they can still make moves to really help them get to that next level. Um, because, of course, I know Ravens got a million guys coming back. And, and hopefully all those guys will stay back healthy. Uh, we don't got to go down the list. I was getting ready to go down the list, but we ain't got to go down the list. Ravens got a lot of guys coming back healthy. Um, but, yeah, interior pass rush is big. Um, helping the secondary is huge. Um, another thing, I'm just... Wondering what the play, just to stick with defense for now, uh, how's, gonna, how's the play from their linebackers going to be? Because that's also important. And I, I keep hearing people say linebacker is a, uh, a devalued position. And I'm thinking, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think so. Because we saw what bad linebacker play got the Ravens early on last year. Those missed tackles. That ooh, it, ooh, it, ooh. So I don't really think it's devalued. Um, but so the quality of the linebacker play is gonna be very important. Um, and yeah, that's those are the biggest things that I think the Ravens need right now on defense. So interior pass rush, uh, good linebacker play, and more depth in the secondary. Because in the secondary, the starters are straight. Starters, you you good with your starters, but behind those guys, what's it gonna be? How's the quality? So those are big questions right now. Now to flip it to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, what, I feel, what I feel they need to do to be a Super Bowl contender. Um, obviously offensive line. Every, everything starts there. Everything starts with the offensive line. Now I know the, um, the I've, I've heard a lot of people say, oh man, yeah, remember what Lamar Jackson did with a good offensive line back in 2019. And look what his weapons were there. 
They were uh, an injured Mar- Mar- Marquise Brown. They were Miles Boykin. And, and hopefully wherever he goes next, he goes and does his thing. Um, they were Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews. They were Willie Sneed. They were Seth Roberts. But now you look at his weapons currently. His current weapons. Because they, they're not done adding yet. But it's Hollywood Brown. It's Rashad Bateman. Uh, so that's right there, an upgrade, because it's a Hollywood in his fourth year, going into his fourth year, Rashad Bateman going into his second, uh, a, a top three tight end, Mark Andrews. I mean, you could make the, he was the best tight end in football last year. Um, so you got a, a, a top tight end in Mark Andrews now, uh, going from a, a rook, no, no, he was a second year in 2019. So going from a second year to a, a top tier tier guy right now, so that's special. Um, you got hopefully you get a healthy Nick Boyle, hopefully, hopefully, but you you still got to do more there. Uh, so that's some what basically what I'm saying when I say all that is that a lot of people say, oh look what he did with his weapons in uh, in 2019 with a good off- good offensive line. Oh man, his weapons now they're so much better than they were back then. While that is is true. Why not add more? Why, why not? Why settle? On, why settle for what the Ravens have now? And why not add more? Get more with it. Give him more. Because if, if you can make a good offensive line, then why not have great weapons to go along? Like, give me more. So anyway, um, but on offense, I feel like the Ravens, they need another tight end, um, uh, another tight end that's similar to Mark Andrews. Um, they need obviously offensive line. Stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. Uh, a left tackle of the future. Hopefully he wouldn't have to be of the present because that would mean that Ronnie Stanley wasn't ready. Um, but they just need a uh, more quality, uh, quality youth along the offensive line. Um, some, and not just like just in case guys, but guys that are like ready, man, guys that are ready. Um, also, uh, a wide receiver. Y'all know we've been talking about that for the longest. Uh, just a significant guy, a, a big, big, big difference maker. Prochet ain't got to go nowhere. Devin DuVernay ain't got to go nowhere. Tyler Wallace, they ain't got to go nowhere. But still, to get a difference maker at wide receiver, the more the merrier, the more significant the merrier. Just bring it on. Um, and then, then execution. Execution from everybody has to be better with Lamar Jackson he has to be better uh with Lamar um because we know Lamar he, he loved looking downfield and I, I I be feeling the same way when I'm playing Madden I'm playing with the Ravens and whatnot I'm always looking downfield because I am very greedy if y'all thought that it was just when it comes to wide receivers and weapons for Lamar I'm greedy no it goes way beyond that and Madden I'm, I'm always looking for the big play always been that way it's been that way for the longest so Lamar I understand from your point of view, why the check down? You're like, no, nah, I don't want no check down. I want the big play. But Lamar just, Lamar with the small decision making. I feel like it, it has to be better with the small decision making. Um, with taking the check downs, with throwing the ball away, with just living to see another down. Um, not feeling like he has to get it all right here, right now. Um, and that that could be a result of overthinking or it could be a result of just trying to get around the play call too so whatever it is who knows um but Giro has to be better in his execution as well um if the Ravens are going to be a Super Bowl contender uh Giro has to he has to be a lot better um and just figuring out the best way to use the personnel that he has um, if he can't do it, if the Ravens, see, this is such a critical season for the Ravens, um, because if, if they can find out, like find out about who they have early on in the season, find out about who those guys are early on, it can be a beautiful thing. But if they have question marks and it gets to like week four, week five, even week six, and they still questioning stuff as far as offense, I, I would expect them to make a move. Um, and something that we talked about early, early on this offseason, accountability from everybody. If Ravens are going to be a Super Bowl contender, the accountability has to start from the top. It, it has to start from the top. Uh, and Harbaugh, as the leader of the team, 
he got to hold his coordinators accountable and himself too and himself for sure but um back to uh Lamar Jackson um just gotta make the plays that's it make the plays and for Lamar one one thing that would help a lot too spreading that ball around more we we know Andrews is his guy we know Hollywood is his guy too uh, but getting his other guys involved too and getting the other guys involved in different ways um with Lamar I would love to see him and he started doing it a bit last year um but I would love to see him take more calculated risks um not necessarily wait until a guy's open a throw to him but if you see a guy one-on-one give him a shot if, if it's the right guy if it's a, like a Bateman or Andrews or if, if it's Pickens when they get him whoever it might give him a shot Give him a shot for the jump ball. Give him a shot to, to go get it. Because uh, I know with, with Lamar, if he don't trust you, <laughs> I mean, I can't, can't really play him, but if he don't trust you, he ain't going to give you that shot like that, man. He ain't going to give it to you. Um, but just, and, and it seems as if, because we've seen the videos with Lamar working with Bateman, with Lamar working with Pro Shea. Um, so it seems as if he's built, trying to build his trust with the other guys, too. And that's a beautiful thing. And that can take this team to a whole nother level. It can take them to a whole nother level. And, oh, man, just imagine like, re- like him really spreading that ball around to everybody. Because we know sometimes he, he can lock on to, to 5 and 89. Um, I mean, those, and those have been the guys for him. Those have been the guys who have given him the most big plays over the years. So we know why he looks for those guys first, because he has big trust for those guys. But if that trust could get spread around, it could get spread around. We'd all be crying tears of joy. Like, like that lady, uh, like the lady uh, at the mall. Oh, I wonder which mall that was at. When Lamar just gave her that bread. I forgot what store they was at. Lamar was walking around with his boys and I, the, the lady just, I, I don't know what, I don't even know what the story was. But he paid, he paid for something for her and she was just crying, 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 crying. Tears of joy though, happy tears. That's the same kind of tears that we would cry uh, if that ball really gets spread around more. Because if you spread the ball around more, um, then that just makes everybody that much bigger of a threat and that much more uh, of a weapon. Um, As far as execution, too, the offensive line, um, block, (laughs) block, pass block, run block. So that improves with the quality of the offensive line improving. Um, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards being back. That'll be really big. We saw Justice Hill. Um, so he, he is on the team right now because that's a question that I had. I wasn't sure about that one, um, especially when he was like, again, he got, in, he got placed on injured reserve slash waived. And I, I thought that it was a possibility that he was going, but Justice Hill was right there lifting weights. When he was showing that videos of everybody coming back, he was right there. I said, okay, they go Justice. All right. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But execution. Um, will will also help this take this team to another level uh, when it comes to them really being Super Bowl contenders. So they got time, of course. The season obviously hasn't started yet. The draft hasn't even happened yet. Ravens have more than enough time to address uh, these different needs that they have right now as a team. They have free agency. They have the draft. They have different ways to make this stuff happen to really help take them over the top yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean you two team keep it clean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it so team keep it clean what's going on welcome to another episode of questions from subs where you can ask any nfl question and we answer it in a video just like this one uh, for all my team keep it clean patrons uh, if you want to participate you can just send me uh, a message right on patreon now uh, if you want to become a team keep it clean patron uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids uh, and if you don't want to it ain't no worries do not feel bad please don't 
Um, if, but if you still want to participate in questions from subs, just send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Um, I really do appreciate everybody's patience when it comes to the questions because I can't always answer every single question because we get a lot. Um, but I, I do always appreciate y'all for sending them. Um, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for making questions from subscribers so much fun because I love it. I love it. We have a lot of fun going over all these different scenarios and all these different possibilities and whatnot and all these different thoughts that a lot of y'all are thinking uh, when it comes to the Ravens or when it just come, comes to the NFL uh, in general. I, I appreciate y'all so much and we got a great episode as we always do because of y'all. Let's do it. Next question came from my boy Charles T and, and appreciate you being a patient, Charles. He said, yo, Engraven, I still believe the Ravens are not doing enough to surround Lamar with enough weapons to win a Super Bowl. They are wasting Lamar Jackson's prime years and this will come to bite the Ravens in the butt. What do you think? Ooh. So, hey, that's similar to what we were just talking about before in that first question. Um, they have some time uh, to make some more moves to uh, really acquire uh, more talent. Um, I think with the Ravens, uh, I, I really feel like 2020, that should have really been the first year where they really started going all in for Lamar Jackson. He was in, he was going into his third year of his rookie contract. He was coming off the MVP season. So in 2019, it was like, all right, no, we don't know about him yet. So we ain't going to really go all in on him. Okay, cool. But he went out and did what he did. So 2020 should have been like, all right, let's let's go in for him because we, we got an MVP on our hands. But uh, a lot of times I just feel like with the Ravens that they rely on um, they rely on Lamar Jackson a little too much and, and just him. And they want him to be sort of the savior. And that's it. And they don't want it to be other people. Uh, and, and I just feel like if they would have gone in for him more. It would have alleviated a lot of stuff off of him and made his job a lot easier earlier on. They can still do it this year, uh, even though it's a little late. Better late than never. So let, let's see what they do with the draft and let's see what they do uh, post-draft as well. Uh, and really providing him with a lot more and just trying to really make this offense the best it could possibly be. Next question came from Lynetta, who is also a patron, which I appreciate. She said, hey, Engraven, how are you and the fam doing? Hey, we're doing pretty good. How are you doing? I said, I have a question. Why do some fans say that they wish that the Ravens would have drafted DK Metcalf instead of Miles Boykin, but don't realize that the same thing could have happened to DK um, with the Ravens where he didn't see his full potential? Oof. Wow. That is, um, that's something right there. Uh, and oftentimes that's something that I don't think about whenever I do see that comment because I see that comment all the time. Oh, man, we should have drafted DK. We should have drafted this guy, that guy. We could have drafted them over Hollywood. We could have drafted them over Boykin. We could have. And I understand people, a lot of people got hindsight is twenty twenty. But for some people, they say that, hey, we, we, we were saying that even before the draft. Um, and they very well much could have been saying that. But that's something that a lot of times I don't even think about when I do see that comment. Um, and that's a very, very good point. And it's a sad point because it's like it's a direct reflection of how a lot of us feel about the coaching when it came, comes to the wide receivers. Um, and it's, it's scary because, uh, again, DK Metcalf, as good as he's been with the Seahawks, as impactful as he's been with the Seahawks, it's a completely different system, completely different coaching. Uh, it's just completely different. So had he been drafted? Uh, by the Ravens in the third round, ooh, that's um, that's scary to think about. I I don't think he would have been the DK Metcalf that we know to this day. Um, it's something that we'll never know, but based off of history, um, it's something that I don't know, man. It just, I it, it wouldn't have looked. It might not have looked good. Now, who knows? Maybe um, because he if they would have drafted him instead of Miles Boykin, then it would have been Hollywood and DK Metcalf and Seth Robinson, Willie Sneed. So it's just one of those things we'll we'll never truly know uh, what could have been. But we know what can be if they do get him now. Uh, but anyway, uh, she said, I hope the Bills or Chiefs or Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick up Miles Boykin and use him to his potential uh, and get him. And he gets a big contract in the Super Bowl ring. Oh, I like that. I would, I would like that. Um, he said, she said, I like Miles and I want the best for him. I'm just wondering, what do you think? Thank you for all that you do. And I appreciate you. No, I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, with, with Boykin, um, just more volume, 
more volume. Him going to an offense that where he would get more volume, more opportunity, I, I think that would really serve him good and, and really be able to draw out uh, his maximum potential so we can really see what he's got uh, in the NFL. Next question came from Draven. He said, hope all is well with you and yours. Uh, I've been thinking and I'm wondering if you think some of our defensive players will wake up and flourish with the new defensive coordinator. Oh, well, to start. Um, yes, I think it could provide them uh, just a breath of fresh air. And I think, well, I hope with this new defense, that it maximizes the players' potentials, but I, I really hope that it also um, just puts them in positions to have significant success and, and just consistent success too. Um, not just being so blitz heavy, not just sitting back and watching everything pass them by, um, but just being responsible blitzers, um, just being responsible on defense. Uh, if you see a guy is struggling, adjust. Don't just keep leaving him on an island. If you see even if whether it's a top guy, whether it's not one of your top guys, whatever it may be, just make adjustments to try to fix what issues are a lot faster. That's what I would hope that this new defense would do. Uh, but continuing, he said, we all know the whole sacks are overrated deal. <laughs> oh boy wink, wink wink has some one-liners man shout out to wink because he has some one-liners boy that he, anyway uh he said we all know the whole sacks are overrated deal but if we open that up now will players like Jalen ferguson wake up Ooh, i can see it happening since they had him and a few others in a scheme that was out of their comfort zone hopefully this is the case okay yeah hopefully it is man uh, next, do you see the ravens before the first game of the regular season demoting greg roman no not at all not at all. I don't think Greg Roman would be demoted at all. Um, uh, if, it, if something happened during a regular season, then it's, it's fired. It, it's fired. Um, I mean, yeah, if something happened during the regular season, it's fired. If something happened after the season, then it would be a mutual parting of ways. as Y'all know how it goes. But no, demoted before the season, don't know. Uh, they have done this in the past, but if you don't think this will happen, then what are the actual benefits of keeping Greg Roman as offensive coordinator? Uh, well, the benefits of keeping him as offensive coordinator are consistency on offense, but a hopeful tweaking to the offense to where they can open up the passing game more. Uh, a hopeful tweaking to the offense that the situational play calling gets better. A hopeful tweaking to the offense that they don't just base this whole thing off of, oh, we top in yards or we one of the top teams in yards and da 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 but that they really look at the scoring too because that's just as important, if not more important uh, than all those yards that you get are. Because from the 20 to the 20, oh yeah, on fire. But then inside the 20, oh man, we, we, we desire more. We need more. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, he said, I always hear about the negative things, so maybe I need to remind <laughs> He said, maybe I need a reminder of good things he brings that we don't think about. But yeah, again, the, the, the consistency, you knowing what you're going to have in your offensive coordinator. But at the same time, that could also be said that that's a bad thing that you know what you have in your offensive coordinator. But hopefully for Greg Roman and hopefully for the Ravens, for everybody that everybody can stay healthy. So nobody has any excuses um, and, and everybody can just make a lot happen. Um, obviously, the, the run game is one of Greg Roman's his strong suits. Uh, hopefully this year, though, they um, they scale back on the design runs for Lamar. Um, and that's something that we we've said throughout last year too, during the season that I, I just wish they would just kill those things. Um, it, he's he's he going to take off when he takes off. But the design ones, let, let's cut way back on those. Just my opinion, though. Um, he said, last of all, who is the old dog that the Ravens will bring in after the draft? Uh, they do it every season, and sometimes they don't make it to the 53, but they do it regardless. I can see Julio, but just wanted your opinion. Thanks, and have a wonderful evening. Appreciate that, the Raven. Um, I can see Julio Jones, too. Uh, I, I, I can see him. Um, well, it can't be Sammy Watkins anymore. Uh, hmm. Because a lot of times, sometimes they'll just bring in guys that you just know are like training camp bodies because they don't want to wear their own guys out. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I could see it being Julio. Uh, they could bring in like a tight end because there, there's still a lot of guys out there that are free agents. Um, but uh, as of right now, before the draft that they brought in a tight end, that guy is staying. But after the draft, no, not necessarily. 
Um, so, man, I can't think of anybody like specifically off the top of my head, but a lot of times it's just for training camp. Next question came from my guy Lee, and appreciate you being a patron. Lee he said, "Hey, Raven, blessings to you and the family. Uh, why do you think the Ravens were in such hot pursuit for Debo Samuel's when they have a similar player, in my opinion, in Devin Duvernay?" Um, and and that that was a rumor. I we we didn't talk about that rumor on here. We talked about the the pot, the my mind changing on if the Ravens were to add him, but that specific rumor about the Ravens being interested in him. We didn't talk about that on here because we didn't see it from anybody um, anybody credible. Because uh, the only places that I saw that, I saw it from the incarcerated Bob. And I know he's said some stuff in the past, but I don't know what his track record is. So I couldn't trust it. Uh, then I saw it from the NFL rumors page on Twitter. And I know. So I just, I didn't see it from anybody credible. So I, I just, I don't know uh, if that's true or not. Um, but. As far as uh, Devin Duvernay, um, is Devin Duvernay a Debo Samuel? No, he 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 he's not. Uh, a little similar, but they they're different. Um, and and I, I used to say the same thing too. Do we have our own Debo on the team already? Um, but with with Devin Duvernay, uh, they don't put him in those positions like the 49ers put Debo Samuel in. They don't. I think they put him at running back like one or two plays last year, though. But they don't do it often. So they they hardly did it at all. Uh, they don't get him very involved in the screen. Man, if they just gave Duvernay screens too, man, give that man screens, man. Give him screens to where that little straight line speed. He's like a little bulldog. He just take off, man. He take off, man. Like I I, I wish they would do do more besides the jet sweeps. Cause we know the jet sweeps they're gonna be there. But I wish they would do more with him to really maximize his game and maximize his potential. We know he can catch. We know that. We know him and Prochet, we know they can catch everything thrown their way. They, they Both of them had the best hands in college. How about you actually let them use their hands? Next question came from my guy Phil. He said, you know, along with all of us, that we have 10 draft picks. Uh, recently, I was watching NFL Network where they were talking about Baltimore and Green Bay. And one of the analysts came out explaining how eager Green Bay is to rebuild their receiving core along with Baltimore and our secondary. So their suggestion was, what if Green Bay made an offer of picks 22, so that's in the first round, and 28, that's also in the first round, in exchange for 14 and 45. So two first round picks for a higher first round pick um, and a, another second round pick. Do you think EDC would accept a move like this? What are your thoughts? Yes, I do. I do for sure. Um, because he would miss out on some of that top end talent, but he would still have a lot of talent that would be available. Um, something that one of my, um, my guy JT sent me an article, uh, that talked about how, um, this draft, uh, well, had a COVID year, the COVID year really, uh, cause the COVID year was in 2020. That's when everything was just wild. Um, but that year really helped um, increase the, the depth that's in this draft because in the COVID year it was 2020 and a lot of players were like, uh, you know what? I want to come back. I, I, that year was an off year. It was weird. I want to just come back and have sort of a normal year, a regular year in 2021, uh, sort of bounce back. Uh, so a lot of players end up staying. So now in this draft, in the 2022 draft, then boom, you got a lot of players that would have been in the draft last year but they decided you know what no we're gonna hold off we're gonna stay another year so we can have a normal season um so that has this draft just having like an influx of talent in it and depth in it um so that's a good thing so that so my point is when i say all that you will still be in the first round you'll be in the first round twice um so you still be able to get some really good talent um and and you still be able to get it <laughs> you still be able to get a really good receiver. Next question came from my boy, Sean. He said, good evening, brother. Hope all is well with you and your fam. Appreciate it, Sean. Now, what do you think that 14 pick is worth? Just wondering. What do you, what do you mean? What is the 14th pick wor worth? Like, hopefully it'll be worth like a, a playmaker and a difference maker. Uh, or as far as you mean, if if they were to trade it, um, hey, like, like my guy, uh, Phil was just talking about in the previous question. You can get two first rounders, two late first rounders for it. Even if you give up a second, okay, I'll take it. Um, so yeah, it's it's yeah, it's just it's worth the 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 
yeah, I, I, that's such a question like threw me off. Man. Like, what is it worth? Um, it's it's worth a lot. It's it's, it's at the top half of the draft. Uh, it's a place that the Ravens don't normally pick from. Um, it's being able to really have your choice of a lot of talent that's there, and it's it's almost. <sighs> Like, I want to say this, but I don't want to say it. But at the same time, ah, it is what it is. It's almost something that you, it's almost like a can't miss. Oh, but, but at the same time, it's just like, it is a can't miss. Like, it's, but at the same time, somebody, they could still miss. But I don't really understand what you mean. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, who is engraving? Oh, well, nobody. Uh, he said, what's up, Engraving? Shout out from Mexico. I've been part of Team Keep It Clean from 2018, and we were uncertain if we would beat the Broncos in week three because of the loss against the Bengals. And I know many of us have known you from your five videos you make every time. Uh, every time, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but a question was kept on my mind. Who is Engraving, and how did you become a Ravens fan from Miami? Certainly not from Lamar, but I was only curious. And he said, by the way, we drafting a top wide receiver if they aren't gone and our primetime offensive tackles and corners are gone. Stay safe and tell your loved ones that you love them. Well, um, just a brief backstory or whatever. I, excuse me, ooh, I am originally from Maryland, even though um, I always, one of the weirdest things that I've seen people say, oh man, if you're not from Maryland, how could you be a Ravens fan? Oh man, you're not a real Ravens fan if you're not from Maryland. Like, and, 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 and even when people say, oh, you're not from Baltimore, you, you're not a real Ravens fan. That has got to be one of the stupidest things that I ever hear. Because it literally makes no sense. You might as well tell Lamar he can't be the Ravens quarterback since he's not from Maryland. Tell Hollywood he can't be the Ravens receiver since he ain't from Maryland. Rashad Bateman, tell him he can't be a Ravens uh, receiver because he's not from Maryland. Like, that doesn't make no sense. And, but even with fans, like, fans are li literally worldwide. Worldwide. And so many different people have so many different reasons to why they love whatever their favorite team is, why they follow whoever their favorite team is, regardless of where they're from. That it, it is just always one of the stupidest. And, and I don't like to even like use that word. But for that conversation, whenever people try to bring that up, oh, man, you, you're not from Baltimore. You're not a real Ravens fan. How are you going to be a Ravens fan in Florida, in Australia, in New York, in New Jersey, in Georgia and here this? It literally does not make any sense. People can like who they like, no matter where they're from. No matter where they're from. So anybody who, if, if somebody try to tell you, oh, you're not a real fan of that, just tell them shut up. That's it. Just tell them shut up. Because it just, that it, it's got to be one of the dumb, dumbest arguments that people try to make. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm originally from Maryland, um, started following the team, oof, man, when was that? I don't even remember, um, that was a while back, uh, my first game that I went to, uh, my first game that I went to, I think Kyle Bowler was still, uh, the Ravens starting quarterback, um, I was, I got to be there for the, uh, the game where Jamal Lewis broke, uh, the 2,000 yards, I got to be there for that live. I got to be there for Air Reed, the, uh, the that tip drill interception against the Browns. I think of Sunday Night Football where uh, it tipped and Air Reed caught it and took it all the way back to the house. That was a beautiful thing. Um, got to be there for uh, the, during the Super Bowl year, um, the Raiders game where oh that that little greedy Harbaugh, little petty Harbaugh, Harbaugh going for it on the the the, the two point conversion that he did the fake point after a touchdown. He did that fake kick where uh, I think Sam Cook just ended up running it in. Um, got to be there for that. That was actually my wife's first game uh, that Super Bowl um, that Super Bowl year against the Raiders. Where the Ravens beat them like 55 to, to some. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's, it, and then it's it just one of those things that just uh, the, the love for the team, it just grew over time because um, – I think my love for football, it had grew over time uh, and just watching them and just uh, when you go there live too, it's different, man. It's different because and that's what I always tell people if you get an opportunity to ever go to your favorite football team's game, go. 
please go. Please go. And you you will not regret it. Even if they lose, hey, it happens. Can't win every single game. But please go because it, it is so much fun. It's so much fun. Now, I really do want to go to a college game, like a good college game. I've been in like, I think I've been in one college game. It's like Miami versus North Carolina. And it was just, it was just like, uh, it wasn't really nothing going on. It's kind of like dry there. But I don't think Miami was really doing too good that year. Neither was North Carolina. But um, it's just, uh, it's, it's something. It's, it's something being a, uh, a fan of a football team and being able to talk about that football team and other football teams um, as your job. Uh, and I, that's why I really am very appreciative for Team Keep It Clean uh, for the fact that y'all made that happen. Y'all make that happen. Um, without everybody's support, uh, without everybody uh, coming through, um, just showing love, man, this wouldn't be able to happen. Wouldn't be able to happen. And I just, uh, over the years, it's, it's definitely been a journey, man. It, it's been a journey. Um, it's funny because with Lamar Jackson, it's like we, we've been going along with Lamar Jackson doing this thing like full time. Because we first started doing it full time. August of 2018. August of 2018 was when we first started doing the fourth because it was August of 2018 when I had got laid off from my job. And I was like, ooh, ah, I don't know, man. <laughs> ooh, I want to try to do it full time, but I don't know about that one, man. Ah. I always felt like we could, but just felt like we just didn't have the time to, to do it. Um, and then I was, uh, again, I was still like, Cause I, I had I had been doing it like on the side like I would come out from lunch on my lunch break I would come out on break from work and do videos and stuff, um, but then when we got laid off it was like oh okay this this could be this could be something now, um, and I was still like looking for jobs at that point but then I was like you know what it got to the point I was like all right you know what let's let's roll with it man let's let's go for it let's really try to do this thing full time man, and it worked out in the long run. It worked out. It took a lot of work. It took a whole lot of work, um, but it 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 worked out in the uh, in the long run. And we're here now. We're not some big enormous channel or anything like that. But um, there's a lot of people that support, and, and I appreciate every single one. So thank you for what you all do. Thank you for you all showing support. Uh, thank you for you all uh, just showing love uh, and and really making this thing happen consistently.